John Wilder, historian for Lepo Schreiden, and I'm joined today by uh, Keith McKinnon. And uh, we have an interesting set of items that we just found today uh, when we've been touring um, here with uh, the very knowledgeable Joe Wooters, who's the uh, uh, curator here of the, the historic items in the Newtonville Masonic Temple. Uh, I always like to say that my job as a historian and archivist is to be nosy. Um, so I'm always the one uh, opening drawers and looking in closets. So we were standing around today discussing where we would film our videos, and you've seen some of the various rooms we're in. And I started opening drawers of the uh, table that was outside the main lounge room. And uh, inside, I saw a bunch of old ribbons. And I said, wow, look at these. And uh, Keith came over and said uh, he hadn't seen these before, but I think you have a general idea of what they were. So uh, if you'd like to take it off. Sure. Thank you, John. Um, number one, um, you know, in your buildings, no matter they're big or small, you got to look all over the place. Uh, when I did the beehive uh, a couple episodes ago, I said, mentioned, have you ever really looked around your own building? And what I mean by that is, you know, you got to open up every door behind every door, behind every shelf. If there's two shelves in a closet, get a step ladder, climb up. Uh, if there's carpeting, believe it or not, carpeting in your regalia closet, lift the carpeting up. I once found a Masona Jew under the carpeting. Uh, open up every drawer. Take the drawers out because items fall in behind the drawers. I once cleaned out a building that had been in the building for 120 years. Open up the secretary's desk was like a time capsule from 1882. Maybe we should go take the drawers out. Yes, we <laughs> should take the drawers out. But John found a, a couple of great um, ribbons. I've seen some of these, except one. And silk ribbons were worn by, for all reasons. Um, I've seen them even for life membership uh, members that would pin it on their jacket. Uh, to indicate that they're a life member. But found a few here today that's kind of unusual. Uh, first there's one, and we're going to give these over to Joe afterwards, and he's really excited because he's never seen them, and he's not going to make a display out of them. But a lot of them don't exist. The time, as you can see in this one here, the silk is falling apart. And this is what happens to them. They just fall apart. So you open up a drawer and there's pieces. Fortunately, a lot of these are in great shape. This one here says Demolay Guards Club. That was for probably Demolay Commandery and it was just for the guards, their own little club. And a lot of Masonic bodies had clubs, officers clubs, perhaps masters clubs and whatnot. We had a uh, guards organization at Boston Commandery. Yep. We still have a dinner each, uh, each summer. Because you have the guides not only in your second division, but on your first, first and third. third. And a first and third division could be 20 people yep. or more. Here's one. Hospitality committee. Now, a lot of these things get thrown away because lodges don't have hospitality committees anymore. And a person, and they might have been, this is in the days when, the heyday of Freemasonry, when we had hundreds of members attending you might have 10 people on the hospitality committee and they'd all get a little ribbon like this to wear during the lodge meeting. Or, yes, lodges had entertainment during the days. Not like we have today, actually during the meetings. That's why some meetings lasted three, four, five hours like some of our videotapes do. But, <laughs> here's one for the entertainment committee. So, so that's they might with the, uh, with the fringe with on the it. fringe on it. Yeah, I've seen some with the fringe. They might be in charge of maybe the guest speaker uh, at dinner or the silent movie. A lot of lodges had silent movies after the meeting uh, or some other entertainment. Like I won't mention the lodge, but we used to have a belly dancer come in. That was really good entertainment. Uh, and some of these. Um, they don't have the pins on them. Obviously, these ones with the ribbons actually do have the pin on the back. Right. But some of them, you can see they're sort of folded on top. A lot of them, you'd have a little tin 
piece that had a slot where you could put a little name tag in there. So that's why sometimes you'll find they're folded over. Right. That's correct. Like this one here. Uh, reception committee. What's a reception committee? Anybody know? You have visitors. Make them feel at home. That was their job. Make them feel at home, the reception committee. What we what we could use today, the refreshment committee. <laughs> it's rather a, hot here today. <laughs> here is another one. This one actually has the, oh, Boston Regalia. So this one's 1900, 1920. This one's another reception committee from that particular lodge. Stamped in the gold. As Joint pointed out, Reception committee, um, refreshment committee. Now, what's a refreshment committee? Well, did you know that a lot of large, especially in the larger buildings, we had cigars. We had cigars every single meeting. Would that fall into reception, uh, refreshments? Yep. Or how about when a large meeting met all day? Oh, yes, we met all day, guys. You whine and cry when the lodge goes an hour and a half, but try to be in a lodge for seven hours. Oh yeah, it happens. It happened. So they have refreshment. They'd have lunch, dinner, maybe a little snack. Then there was refreshment after the meeting, called a collation, which sometimes was even better than the dinner. Now this is one that I have never seen. And I'm hoping one day when I come back to Newtonville, I'll see this in the display case. Examinating committee. Now, many of you lodges, yes, I know you <coughs> have various committees. <coughs> and I have seen some with examining committee. And a lot of times it's just one individual. But at sometimes you had numerous people as examining committees because you also had numerous visitors. Back in the day, you might have 5, 6, 10, 20, 30 guys visiting from New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Texas, England, India. South Africa, who knows where they came from. And each one had to be examined individually. So you had to have a lot of guys to do that. And each guy got a little ribbon. And sometimes, on the average, you got three guys on the committee. So the visitor would come in to do himself usually to the Tyler or go to the master of the secretary, present his papers, uh, if he was usually uh, from outside the continental United States. <clears throat> and then an examining committee would be appointed. Sometimes it could be one person, sometimes it could be up to three people or more. And then they would go out and examine the individual. Um, and then they would testify in the Tyler's book that he was examined. But that's a, a great ribbon. Uh, I wish I found these, Joe, uh, 10 years ago. When I was still curator of Cambridge, I would have grabbed a whole bunch of these for the display at Cambridge. But they're great pieces. Uh, guys, look around your buildings. Look around your buildings. They're there. Especially the larger ones, they are there. So with that, I want to thank John. Uh, we're ending here in Newtonville. Great building. Once again, I can't stress enough, you've got to come visit Newtonville. Anything else to add, John? As you said, look around. I'll, I'll say it uh, time and time again. I say my job, but I'll say it to everybody. Remember to be nosy. Uh, now, that doesn't mean be light-fingered, uh, but uh, it, it's out there. You know, look around and uh, work work with uh, your brothers to get stuff into the right hands where it can be uh, appreciated but also preserved. As you see, some of these are falling apart. Um, you know, another 10 years they could have disintegrated. So I think uh, I think it's an interesting find today and a chance to preserve them. So. Yep, thank you. Yep, always look around. Uh, and as Sean mentioned, uh, don't be fighting it. And, you know, if the door is locked, guys, don't, you know, take a butter knife. Okay, leave the door locked. Leave it alone. Okay, it's not your building. Uh, but, yeah, be nosy. There's lots of great stuff out there. Look around every building you go into. It's filled with tremendous treasures. You just got to open your eyes and step out of the box. With that, I'm done.